guys, just as a disclaimer, this episode was written, I had the idea, it was written uh, a few weeks ago. And basically, WISD has released uh, or announced the release of Embed 2, which fixes every problem in this video. However, I wanted to release it because if you are using version one, then this should incentivize you to really reconfigure your applications um, as soon as they release Embed 2. And also, there are some learnings here that can be applied elsewhere. So think about what I'm talking about. Think about fundamental web development. Think about leveraging the web. And this becomes like a practical example of how we miss out if we're just doing everything with JavaScript. So with that, watch the video with that in mind and uh, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something new. There's a fundamental rule in web development, which is basically that a website should work without any JavaScript. There can be any number of reasons why a website doesn't have JavaScript. It could be a slow connection. It could be a 404 on the JavaScript file. But unfortunately, I see so many websites out there uh, that do not leverage the standards of the web first before adding JavaScript. And this means websites just don't work. It means you're missing out on tons of free functionality and it just, it leads up to a worse website experience for everyone. And unfortunately today, the tool in question is Wiz. Now I think it's a fantastic idea, but there are some fatal flaws in its execution, which you need to consider before using Wiz. And quite frankly, I would not consider using Wiz whatsoever until they fix this floor. So as much as I wanna be out here finishing my lunch, let's go inside and I'll show you what I mean. Now, before we get into it, I'm not intending on throwing any shade on Wiz and the FinSuite guys. I know they're doing some fantastic work, but I do think it's important for us to uphold standards of web development and call it out when it's not quite hitting the mark. And in turn, they can learn, they can develop. So for that, I just want to raise the issues that I've seen and hopefully that they can fix it and we get a better experience for everyone involved. Okay, so here we have a test page and to give you a sort of blitz tour of Wiz, I have, a, I have like a sign up form, which is a pretty normal thing and something you might wanna do on Wiz is have a form that submits some data um, or submits a username and password and logs you in or or writes to a database or whatever. It's, it's, this, is, this is the cornerstone of website development here, the exchange of data. So what I'd wanna do is I've already set up a an app here, basically that links through to request bin. Now I love request bin, I will go through it on another episode, but it inevitably allows us to see what I'm sending to the back end, right? So I've set up my app and now I wanna configure this form to when someone signs in, um, that they are then signed in basically. So, okay, so we need to add an attribute so that Wiz knows about this login. So we'll do that. We'll come here and we'll say custom attribute Wiz login use. So Wiz, what's on my time today? Username and Wiz password. And then we have our buttons that we can sign actions to so we want to when we apply to the login and on click we want to um, perform a request right okay so we're now we need to set up the request so you can see it saved as draft so we can comment that out we want to send data right so let's add a request let's go let's just call this login uh, no folder that's fine and then request bin URL endpoint this will be what is past the base url this is fine a slash is just fine i'm pretty sure we haven't stored a slash at the end of this yep that's right so slash is fine method we want to post and i think that is everything let's see what happens here let's ignore that for now draft action and then we want to log in okay let's preview that so Sam, and I'm gonna put the password as Sam. Let's just see what happens when I click this, which naturally nothing would happen because, let's put that in, this is the thing. And those are some test ones I've done. So nothing is happening. And we can confirm nothing's happening by just going 
to our network, clearing that, and as you can see, nothing is going on. Now, the thing is now is that the reason why this is not working or that nothing is happening is because we need to remove this submit button and add our own button, which is just a link. Um, log in. Uh, let's just double check everything. Let's add the whiz here. Whiz. So log in. Still got the login, still picking up that. Cool. So now that's happening, right? Now we're getting a thing, um, a request, which we probably shouldn't see anything, but if we look at request bin, you can see that we're sending data. Now the body is empty. So let's give this just complete the whole thing and um, make this a proper login. So body, we want to go username. And then we want to set that as username. Okay, things are looking good now. And then we want to add the password. We want to make sure that is the password. Okay. So now we're sending the username and password to, in our case, request bin, but this could be any any other um, product or service. Okay. So inspecting, make sure we've got everything going on. Uh, Sam. Sam. So we sent it. So the crest body, body, password name, and Sam name. So we've got this working. This is where the problem is because if you remember, we added a click action to a normal form, like a normal button. Sorry, this is just a normal button. It's not a it's not a submit button. It's not anything. And I think a pretty normal behavior. I mean, it's not what I think. It's the the very nature of the web is that I should be able to type my username and password and hit enter. But of course, we've bound a click event to a button that's inside a form. It's not, it has nothing to do with the form whatsoever. And you'll see that when we're on a mobile, we're not getting any, where, where you can see the return button there, we're not seeing a go. And this is what we, what we understand as standards, that if we leverage the default behavior of the web, then we get built in functionality like what you just saw on the, on the mobile browser there. So this, is completely broken. This is not, doesn't work at all because it's completely beholden to a click on that login button. But there are many, many, many scenarios where you won't want to click that button. Again, like I say, people use the go button on in, inside the mobile browser. The correct way would be to bind or to add the action onto the form itself and the submit event of the form. So however that form gets submitted, it could be clicking on the submit button, it could be clicking on the go button, it could be, you know, clicking on, I don't know, once you've uploaded a picture, it could be on any action. As long as you submit that form, then the request that we've set up in Wiz will happen. A, a common rule that I think really tests whether your website is functional and accessible. And remember, when I say accessible, it doesn't mean to disabled users. It means that's accessibility. What we just saw there, the fact that I can click go on, on the form and log in like that. Accessibility is everything and everyone. As long as your website works without any JavaScript and you can disable JavaScript in the, in the browser, then it is a fully functioning, accessible website. And that is why Wiz just is a no-go option. I'm sure they're working on something. I took a look at their Wiz um, Embed 2 stuff, so they are actively working on it. But this is this is a fairly new iteration of the Wiz configurator, I believe. I'm not fully, you know, I'm not fully up to date with everything that they're doing, but I think this is a fairly new configurator. And yet we're still clicking on a on a a link to submit a form. And that's just that's just not right. So I hope this makes sense. I hope Wiz takes a look at this and really thinks about what they're doing because this this just wouldn't fly. If you were to bring this to a client, like a large client, 
then they wouldn't have any of it because it's inaccessible. It, it's not It's not going to work on a whole heap of devices. It's not going to work in a whole heap of scenarios. It's just going to work when you click that login button. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. I hope that you can reassess whether WISD is the right tool for you. Um, but quite frankly, I have to be honest, I can't see why this is acceptable at this point. This, this absolutely 100% needs to be fixed. I haven't delved dramatically deep into Wiz. There might be other um, things, there might be other things that it can do, but as soon as I got asked to do this by a client, as soon as I started digging in and playing around with it, I knew right off the bat that we couldn't, we couldn't use this piece of software. It was fun, it was great, and it's really cool. It's clever, but it's not acceptable, and it's not accessible. So until next time, Happy no coding.